Hello and welcome to the PHP class. Let's talk about installing and using PHP from your own computer. Uh, right now we're taking an online class and if you're going to use my website you're going to have to be connected to the internet. But it's really nice to be able to program in PHP without a connection to the internet. By installing PHP on your personal computer you can run and use PHP programs without having to upload them to web pages. Let's get started. The package we're interested in is called XAMP. It's called XAMPP, and a quick Google search on that will take us to the link to download XAMP. That is the proper name right there, and I see the icon that matches it. This is what I want to download and install. A couple of things on this page. First of all, it's called MariaDB up here at the top. That's MySQL. MySQL and MariaDB are the same thing. Uh, I guess Oracle bought MySQL and they own the name, so the open source version is called MariaDB. Don't get too confused about that. MySQL and MariaDB will get us the exact same thing that we want. You can see we also get an Apache web server with this, as well as PHP and Perl. Uh, we're going to be using Apache for sure, PHP right from the start, and MariaDB later on in the course. The next thing I want to point out on this screen here is the default version that I'll have you download is PHP 7.3. We do not want PHP version 7.3. That is not the version we're running on. If you come back over here to my web page and I click on lecture one and scroll down to here, you can see on my server, we're running PHP version 5.3. You always want to install the version of PHP that matches your server because eventually when you load this stuff onto a web page, that's the version of PHP you're running. So I'm running version 5.3. If I go over here to X10 host, one of the free hosting accounts that I encourage you to do, click on the help center, type in PHP version here. You can see they're running version 5.4 or 5.5. So we're definitely working with PHP version 5 in this class. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with version 7, but you always want to get your personal version on your computer as close to the version as you can. Now, as far as the difference between 5.3 and 5.4 and 5.6, those are minor differences. But version 7 is quite a bit newer, so we'll go ahead and download version 5.6. I'll click here for other versions, and you can see on this screen for the Windows, there's a version 5.6 and several flavors of version 7. Under the Linux operating system, there's a 5.6 and several versions of 7. And under the Apple OS, there is a version 5.6 and several others. Pick the operating system you're running and download for that version. And again, I'm going with version 5.6 because it's closest to my server. And that's what you want to download. Clicking on the download button for Windows, because I'm running a Windows computer here. I'll go ahead and start to download. The download doesn't take too long to execute, so I'll go ahead and wait for it to complete here. Again, version 5.6 is what we want for this class. Excellent. Download is complete. I'll go ahead and click on it to run the install program. And what you'll find is this is a very easy install. XAMP with its Apache server and PHP and its MySQL or MariaDB is a really, really easy install. It's also an easy uninstall too. So that's what I like most about it. You'll see there's a warning message about your virus protection programs. I have never had a problem with my virus protection program um, interfering with this, so I just go ahead and hit yes. There's another one about user account control. Again, I have not had any problems on my computer. I can't vouch for your computer, but I just go ahead and hit OK on this one too. And we're ready to run the setup wizard. I'll take all the default options on here. I don't need anything special. There may be some stuff here that we don't exactly need, but I'll go ahead and take the defaults anyway. Now here is what's critically important. What folder are you installing XAMP? Make sure that you install it 
uh, in a place you can find it. I'll go ahead and leave the default C colon backslash X A M P P and make a note of this. We're going to go back to this directory when we are ready to install and test this. So this is an important critical folder. Try and take the default. That way we're all using the same thing. But if you have to install it somewhere else, just make sure you know where you put it. Now there's some other stuff here that XAMP wants you to know about. I go ahead and just unclick that and hit next. Now we're ready to install. And here it is. Basically all it's going to do is create the directory on your hard drive and then copy a bunch of files to it. There's nothing fancy about this install. I don't even think it changes your window registry. It's just a uncompacking or uncompressing of the files into a folder on your hard drive. And that's all it is. It's a very simple, easy install. I'll go ahead and pause it and come back here shortly. We're back. The install is almost done. And we're almost ready to run PHP on our own computer. Woohoo, that's it. We've completed it. Do you want to start the control panel now? I'm going to go ahead and leave that clicked on because that will run PHP for us. I'll hit finish. I'll select English because hopefully that's what I'm speaking right now. And here is our PHP or XAMP running. XAMP, that is the program that we're running. Apache is the web server. In order to fully execute PHP on our computer, we need to run this Apache web server. That is the required piece, especially at the start of the class. Later on, uh, we'll also want to run MySQL. MySQL is in the second half of this course, so we don't really need it right this second, but I'll go ahead and start it and stop it to show you that we can run MySQL too. When we get into database programming, that's when we'll run MySQL. Remember, MySQL and MariaDB are the same thing. We're really running MariaDB on this install. Uh, you'll notice some confusion between the names MySQL and MariaDB. Apparently, the developer that built both of these, MySQL and MariaDB, has daughters. And his first daughter's name is My, so he called the first program MySQL. The later program, his second daughter, named Maria, so he called that MariaDB. But they are functionally the same thing as far as we're concerned, MySQL and MariaDB. So that's it. We've got XAMP running. Uh, this is the program that we have to execute in order to run PHP programs on our computer. Make sure that you start the Apache web server and you're ready to write MySQL programs. Okay, with the XAMP install done, let's go ahead and shut down the web pages for downloading XAMP and go back to my main web page. And let's see how we use PHP. Let's go ahead and execute or run a PHP program on my computer. This is requires no upload, no need for anything. Next up, we need to go to the Windows command prompt to check out our install and to test it. So you can type in command prompt here on the search box, or I'm going to the Windows button here and I'll scroll down to Windows systems. Windows System, and under Windows Systems, you'll see a program there called Command Prompt. Now, I can just run it on my computer and it will work. Um, sometimes you might need to run this in administrator mode, so I'll go to More, and you can see Run as Administrator here. I don't need to do that on my computer, so I'll just go ahead and click on the Command Prompt and load it up. And this gets us out to the shell where we can type in commands. Do you recall that directory that we installed XAMP in? I do. I'm going to cd or change directory to c colon backslash xampp, and that is the directory where we installed it. The dir command will show us a listing of the files in that directory. And the most important one in here is one called htdocs. If you look right here, there is a folder inside uh, xamp called htdocs, and that's where we put our web pages that we want to execute. So I'll cd to htdocs, and once again, I will do a dir, and this is our folder. 
This is the folder where if we install a web page into this folder, we can load and see it from the web browser. Hmm. So the next thing we need uh, is a web page, right? So let's use Notepad or some other program and find a web page that we can install into this folder and see if we can see it through our web browser. Hmm. So what's next? You can do a simple program like Notepad or Notepad++ and I'll come out here to lecture one and find ourselves a simple PHP program. Now the first program here is really, really simple. It was meant to be the smallest one I could write. I'm going to scroll down a couple programs here to get to this one right here. This one's a little bit nicer because it has the required standard headers that keep you from displaying a lot of warning messages on the web browser. Uh, so I'm going to get the Hello World, I'm running PHP program here, and I'm just going to simply copy it. And I'll go into my text editor. In this case, I have a text editor named Notepad++, and I'll paste it into there. And I will do a file save as, remember our folder? What is the folder we want to go? We want to go to the C drive, the XAMPP folder, htdocs. And in there, we are going to save a file called test.php. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to use test.php. I'm also going to make sure on the file type that I select a PHP file type. Sometimes it wants to put a .txt extension on it. I definitely want a .php. This will not work unless your file has a .php extension. Now, one way I can tell that I got the proper .php extension on it is notice the color highlighting. Once it knows it's a PHP file, it will color highlight it properly for you. Excellent. So we now have in our XAMPP htdocs folder a PHP test program. What do I do next? Well, that's easy. I'm going to come out here to my web browser and go to a place called localhost. Localhost means my computer right here. And if I go to localhost, you'll see that I get the XAMPP default web page. Hmm. But what else do I have in there? If you recall, instead of going to the dashboard, we created a file called test.php. And I'm going to go to localhost slash test.php and see if I can see my file. Hello world, I'm running PHP. That's exactly what it's supposed to show. Guess what? I'm running PHP on my local computer. No web server, no uploading. Right there off of my hard drive, I can run and display a PHP web page. Back to my text editor, you can see there it is. Now, do you want to see why we want this on our computer? I'm going to say, hello, Chris, I'm running PHP. Make a quick change on the file on my computer. Come back here and hit reload. And voila, the change shows up. That's it. See how easy it is to run PHP on your computer? All we have to do is install XAMPP and know about this htdocs folder. Coming back to my command prompt, I'll hit a dir to show you the files there. There's my test.php file. Um, I can replace this index.php or I can create my own .php files in this folder and I'm off and running, executing PHP directly. Now what does this mean? This means you won't have to be logged on to your server in order to test and run your PHP web pages for this class. You can do all the work on your computer in this folder and when you got it working right and everything's beautiful, then you upload it to the server. There's nothing wrong with using X10 hosting, but we don't want to have to be connected to it while we're developing software. It's much easier to program on your computer and then upload the tested working web pages once we have them working the way we want. That's excellent. Now there's one other thing I want to show you. In okay, coming back to my command prompt, I'll do a dir command, and this is where we put our web pages. This is where we put our .php files to do it. But if I go back out another directory, back to the XAMPP folder, and hit a dir on that one, there's an important file in this folder called xamp-control.exe. This is our executable XAMPP program. This is the program we want to run. 
So what I'm going to do is go out to my desktop here really quick and say, give me a new shortcut. And what I want to do is shortcut to that xamp.exe C drive. Go to my xamp folder. And remember the name of the file we want to execute is the control panel. So I'll do the xamp control panel and I'll create a shortcut to it on my desktop. Hit next. We'll call it XAMP control. That's fine by me. Ooh, look at that icon. I love the look of that icon. That is what I want. I'll even, because I'm lazy, you could pin this to the start or you can drag it down onto your bar there and it'll show up on this bar and you can run it anytime you want. Remember, the key to running PHP on your computer is launching this program and starting your Apache web server. If this program is not running, you cannot access localhost. If you can't access localhost, you can't run it. If I hit stop here on Apache and go back to my web server and try and run my program again, uh, I should get an error message. In fact, it's sitting there going back and forth and saying, hey, I can't connect to localhost. You've got to start and stop this. So I will start Apache again. And once Apache is running on the XAMP control panel, I can hit reload and I'm back and running. It's a very simple, easy program. Let's install XAMP and get yourself running on PHP for your computer. I think there's one last thing I want to show you on the control panel. CD to HT docs. DIR. See this index.php file there? So I made a quick copy of that file. And the reason I made a copy of that is because on my web host, chances are I'm going to use a file called index.php. So now I can replace this without destroying the old file. And I'm off to the races. Chances are for this class, for what you're going to upload to the X10 host or whoever you're using for your host, you're going to call your file index.php. So I just saved a copy of it. Now I can overwrite index.php and I'm off to the races. That's where I'm probably going to put my web page for this class. There you have it. We'll wrap it up. We're running PHP. Remember, you've got to have the control panel running in order to execute Apache and access localhost. Then once you have it on localhost, you can go ahead and access any file on localhost that you want. Let's go ahead and do a save as over index.php. And what I'll do here is override the one that I just saved. And again, hello, PHP. I'm running PHP. Index.php is the default file, so I don't even have to type it in if I do it that way. Okay, so that's the start of executing PHP on your computer. Go ahead and play with it. Configure it the way you want. And we're off to the races. I'll come back out here to my main website again. Remember, it's two lessons per week. You have to complete two lessons every week. Make sure that you do that. Thank you, and we'll see you in the rest of the class.